going to be part of the game always. So like every one of us is human, like me and Martin and like, and like everybody. So you will have emotions like all the time. You can never stop that. <laughs> um, but then some things that really help is like, if you, if you think something like, oh, I'm so sad, like I miss my, I miss home or I'm, I'm so frustrated. It, it's like, you can, from, you can use it um, to say like, I feel sad or I feel frustrated. So even like take a little gap, like it's not, it's not you that feeling, but you feel that feeling. Or even like going one step further back is even like, oh, I notice I feel sad. Oh, I notice I feel frustrated. So yeah, getting this little gap always helps. And then I also like to see it like that every kind of challenge we face is like a training for the next challenge that comes. <laughs> so like things are complicated right now. I think for everybody, I don't know anybody who's like really fine right now, who's like, oh, it's an easy life right now because like we, we all of that, we all in that kind of together, I feel, and makes it also a little bit easier because like if everybody feels like insecure by how things are going, like, right, okay, this is kind of a shitty world right now. There's insecurities. We have really the chance to learn something new, to like align ourselves more like how we want, what is more authentic for us. You no, know, I love that you're using campus resources, um, if that's what you're doing, and like going to uh, a therapist. I feel like there's such a stigma around it, especially with athletes. And I think Mia uh, mentioned this earlier too, like being the Croatian, the strong culture that you come from show no weakness, weakness, you know, and that too is so prevalent within sport. I really wish it wasn't. I wish that athletes didn't um, kind of associate be, like mental weakness with um, mental illness. Uh, but I think it's important for us to like be available to get help and like understand that it's totally okay. So I just wanted to say victoire, like <laughs> awesome job on going to therapy. It's so needed and I love to hear that. So I think it takes a lot of courage even today. I mean, it's 2020 and even today, some people are just hesitant to go up, go out of their way to help themselves, you know. And um, what you guys were saying, the rookies, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you are all are rookies, but you're pretty fresh. And uh, it's all valid. I mean, you have your fears, you have your struggles. You need to... I mean, I'm just speaking from experience. I don't have any, uh, I'm not in the field of psychology, but I've been, I've been experiencing my own struggles through the years and like reevaluating myself and everything. But what I want to say from my own experience is just that you, you will help yourself if you try to identify from which you need to distance yourself and from which you need to like go through it like overcome it for example you have emotional coach i mean emotional coach he can be a good guy or he can be a shitty guy i mean you know like emotions are not bad but sometimes if someone puts all of their like baggage on you it's it's bad for everyone so i'm those kind of differences you I, i've seen a lot of coaches and if it's emotional coaches i'm fine with but you know the ones that really really like get in your face and make your life miserable that's not cool and um in certain point you need to realize that they're they're not going to change especially if they're older or like older people and you just need to be able to distance yourself and still do your job be you like be the best version of yourself like work good be good do good and i mean as much as this one person can affect your job daily or life daily you just need to decide whether you're going to let them or not i mean it is what you're there for and um, that's from a professional standpoint i know it's hard being away from your family and everything and 
it's a big big challenge but you just focus on yourself and you need to realize that if you're good your family is good because your parents the only thing they want is for you to be happy so you just do you and the moment they see your face and you see their faces you'll be fine because if you're happy your mom will know she's like that you're happy and it'll be everything for her so that up too because first off that just sounds terrible <laughs> um, i'm sorry that you guys had to deal with that and are still dealing with that that's just ridiculous it's a lack of education honestly there's nothing more to it um, I think that if you're performing well and if you feel good, then that's it. The fact that your coaches have like this thin idealism in their minds and they think that that somehow um, determines the way you play, whether you lose five pounds or whatever, it's just so ridiculous. It's so antiquated. It's so, it's not science backed. It's dumb. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. So just ignore it um, if you can. But gosh, it, was, it certainly would be hard to do. So yeah, I just want to say kudos to you for trying to maintain like a positive mindset around food and all of that because it's definitely not easy especially if you've dealt with an eating disorder and I do think that it's a coach's responsibility to like spread body positive messages so I don't know maybe maybe something needs to be written in contracts where it's like you're not allowed to tell young women to lose weight because what the hell is that about like this is this is a very big issue for young athletes and I don't know I just don't think that's right at all. I also want to say two words about that. Thank you. Um, I'm, and I'm also happy that that came up. And I have also like some kind of a personal story with that. And I do work also with athletes right now who, who struggle with like eating disorders. Um, and one thing like we can always rely on is like the feeling of like being hungry and being full. And this is so, so simple, but I, I feel and I felt like as an athlete, you get to unlearn that. It's like, okay, you eat, you eat more when you have like a hard practice in front. You eat more because you have a game. You eat less because you don't have practice. But actually our body knows all of that. It's like much more wise than our head is. So if you just listen to, okay, am I hungry? Well, I am. Well, maybe I'm not. And what do I want to eat? We, like our body even knows, knows that. Like what, is, what, 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 you, what you want to eat, that probably you, you need that. And then it's like, oh, I'm full. And you don't need to eat, need to eat more than you, than you want to. Um, and I really had to relearn that after I, I stopped playing. Because I feel like we like nobody asks if you're hungry or if you're full. Um, yeah, just sad. Much keep track of them even in some way. Reward yourself. You know, don't always punish yourself with all of this negative talk. Like I'm not where I want to be. You are on the way, and that matters. Katarina, why are Mia and I laughing at you saying you can't score without tipping? Because oh. today, all you could do was roll shot and tip, and you beat MK. You don't yeah. have any. Uh -oh. <laughs> the same. So anyways, ladies, that's all I have about that. Just, just remember, like, hopefully next uh, time we have this, you guys will be able to say, like, I was tracking this, and I, I have these wins, and I'm proud of them, because you should be. It's a process. This is not result-oriented. If you want to be an elite level player, you cannot be result oriented. You got to be processed. So your wins are part of your process to get to where you want to be. I always highlight two to three practices a week where I need to like go off like totally, like 100%, like kill it. And it will always depend whether I have like two matches a week, like Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, or just Saturday or Sunday, depending on the league, right? depending on uh, where they play in the Europe, usually Europe. Uh, so if it would be like uh, just a weekend, just one, one match a week, I would come up. Uh, so if it's Saturday, I would come up Monday 
like do a killer uh, weight weightlifting and usually we had like weights and a ball and then I would like kill myself in that practice and then afternoon practice I would kill myself more and then the next day I'll be like half dead and fine and then I'll be like 70 percent Wednesday I will come off come to practice usually it's like weight day so like those weights I will go like 80 percent and ball and then I will come in the afternoon and just kill myself right like I will kill everyone and then that'll be my week I'll, I'm ready for Saturday and then the, the other days it's just like fine tuning right but when I have like two matches then I will focus like highlight two practices uh, two practices uh, a week where I just need to do that to be like I'm good you know so basically I did all my career like that like all these years like that and it kind of worked I cannot say I I went through my weeks and actually I was getting each week better like throughout the season and I was really really happy and fortunate enough that I didn't have any injuries because I really took like time to recover and time to like push it and everything but I always really challenged myself every single day but I I would always take like two days a week two to three days a week depending how many games I play where I would like just go all out like just to the maximum of my capacity and my ability and my endurance at that moment like I work on any everything it's just like like a game day you know I also can share something um <laughs> Because I think it's really helpful to make a habit of journaling, like to put like what I also share with all athletes I work with is like, I suppose to make a journal with like three questions in the morning and three in the afternoon in the evening. And of course you can use whatever you want to journal, but I think it's really helpful like in the morning to ask yourself, okay, what do I think will happen? Like what good things will happen today? how do I want to be today and what is my focus? And like, I, I'm doing this too, like every single morning. And I think like, what is my focus for today is huge, especially now when like things usually have no focus. And then in the evening, like what, what are good things that happened? What did I learn, experience? Usually something that was maybe not so just positive. Um, and then what I'm grateful for. And then I write that down too. I close that book and the day is done. And next morning, first thing I do in my bed, I open that book, I write those three things down. And okay, the day starts. And I feel this is really quick. And it, may, it, has, like a, it has a kind of big impact. So maybe that helps also like some of you. I wouldn't jump days on that like future travel or something like that. And then by the time I got to Wednesday, but for sure Thursday, Friday, I just really, I tried to set myself up for states of flow. And I believe if you haven't read the book, The Rise of Superman or going to the Flow Collective or any of these places to learn about how can I give myself the best chance? How can I kind of trigger these things to set myself into flow? And basically a lot of it is about just like letting go, stop focusing on such detail and just playing. And so for me, it was really important that I got at least two days where I could find myself in flow with my point scoring after reception, if I was receiving, and if I wasn't receiving, allowing myself to have this ritual as an opposite before I would hit. And just, so I love that.